Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a tier ranking of everything I've read in October. So once again, welcome back or welcome if you're new. I am so glad you decided to click on this video. So like I said, today I am doing a tier ranking of all the books I read in October. So like, is it just me or did this seem like the longest month? Because I'm looking back at the books that I read and I'm like, that was October? Because some of these, I swear, I feel like I read them two months ago. So I'm sorry if I forget some stuff. It's been a month. I, I feel like I'm also just in a weird place where sometimes stuff just goes right out of my head. But I know I have talked about that a little bit already. So I won't bore you with my sad depression stories, but I just might not be able to give the greatest details, but tier rankings are fun. So I read a total of 16 books this month, and these ranged from amazing to really not. So <laughs> let's just get into this. My categories are as follows. Obsessed, worth the read, meh, with this girl, stop, and I hate it here. I try to get creative with these and like find fun ways to name the categories, but then I can't think of anything or if I think of like two and then like nothing else to go with it. So then I just decided to put it as things I actually say in real life. So here we are. So first on this is Close Enough to Hurt, which I read close to the beginning of the month and can't recall all the details about. However, I do know that I gave it two stars. This is going to go under stop. Actually, it's going to go under I hate it here because it really wasn't good. This was about a girl who runs a business basically scamming guys, ruining their lives because it's like a vigilante justice kind of situation. And so she ends up, it's like, you know, obviously kind of underground secretive because that's not really legal, but... She gets a call from a client, a potential client, who is like, I want you to like take this guy down because he fired me for calling him out on like fraudulent stuff. This guy also happened to be someone who like sexually assaulted the sister of the vigilante justice lady. So she's like, oh yeah, no, I'm going to take him down. In the meantime, that she has a business partner who is kind of like ready to settle down in his life and leave the leave the business and like get some sort of like conventional type job because his parents want him to. And he's supposed to be like in his 30s, I think. I don't know. This sounded like, oh cool, like a badass girl kicking butt, like as my good friend Michaela Reeds would say, a good for her story. However, it was not because this just this was not a thriller. This was a romance. And there were some thrilling aspects, I guess, and I thought I would really like this. However, this just became this dumb ass girl getting into all kinds of trouble and then this man needing to come save her. So yeah, this did not this did not do what I needed it to, and I I hated it. Next is Mary by Nat Cassidy. This I I think I'm going to put under Obsessed because that was very good. This was a recommendation from, I think this was also from Michaela, and I I loved this. I listened to the audiobook, and it was fantastic. It was very long, but it was very worth it. This is kind of like Imagine Carrie by Stephen King, but like in as an adult without... The telekinesis. Mary is a middle-aged woman who has had a really kind of tough upbringing. She lived with her aunt who was like not very nice to her growing up and but she got out of her small little town that she grew up in in Arizona and she moves uh, to New York City. So she's lived there for her whole adult life really and she ends up getting fired from her job at a bookstore Basically, it's it seems like it's kind of an ageism thing. So she ends up moving back to her hometown in Arizona and taking care of her aunt that was cruel to her. Side note, 
Mary's going through menopause, which is pretty important in this book. And in addition, she, she's like seeing things. Like anytime she looks in the mirror, she sees like dead people. She sees like herself dead. The details are fuzzy. I read this at the beginning of the month, but this was so good. It it kind of plays like it's very character driven. So the story just kind of takes off from there with her back in her hometown. And she has to, like, kind of revisit some of the, you know, bullies that she had in school. and But everyone's an adult now. And, like, kind of reckoning with, like, maybe her memories aren't really how things were. So I, I really enjoyed this. It was really creative. And something I was, like, kind of, like, huh about is the fact that this is written by a man. And it's very much about, like, women aging. And... During the book, I was, like, very weird about it, but the author's note at the end really kind of explained it all and really made me feel like, okay, yeah, no, you can write this story. Because, like, he even says that. He's like, so why do I have any right to write this story? And I just appreciated that, like, self-awareness and knowing that people will be wondering why he thinks he should write the story. Anyways, this is a really solid horror book. It's long, but it's worth every page, and I definitely recommend Mary. Okay. Next, I read Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton. I was also obsessed with this. This is like, I think, the second to last book that I read this month, so it's fresh in my mind. And I just really, really enjoyed this. I listened to the audiobook. It was very quick. And if you are like a fan of Harry Potter, if you have like nostalgic memories of the movies, it's a really good, really good book. And it was like really nice to see that like, all of these actors really are like good people and nice people. I don't know. I just, it's like one of those, like, you're always scared to meet your heroes. And like, granted, I didn't meet any of these people. However, I read about them. And it's nice to read that, like, you know, all of the famous British actors in the Harry Potter films are kind, nice people. And we're like really good to the kids on set. I also really enjoyed hearing about his life post Potter, which I don't, I didn't really know anything about. He's had some struggles with alcohol and I, I didn't know that. I'm not at all surprised just as a ch former child actor. And I, I really enjoyed reading about his life and I think this is a good memoir. If you were interested in the Harry Potter books and movies, I think you will enjoy this. And this is definitely going to be on my celebrity memoir recommendation list to come. I'm pretty sure that I don't need to say this, but in case I do, Tom Felton played Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies. I feel like most people that are watching this will know that already, but I thought I should throw it in here at the end. <laughs> Next is Homebodies, which is a book that I read again very, very far in the beginning of October. So I feel like... I'm going to do a bad job explaining this. I'm going to put this under worth the read because I did enjoy it. So this is about a woman who gets fired from her job as a journalist. As It's like thinly veiled sort of racist move. And she's black and she's uh, queer. And so she's just kind of got a lot to say about this. She goes into like a deep depression and her partner is like, you got to do something, you got to fix something. So she writes this piece and posts it on Twitter. And it's just kind of calling out all kinds of like sexism and racism in the uh, journalism industry. And she's like, maybe this will go viral. This will be my new start. Like I can write whatever I want. And it's just met with silence. So she goes back to her hometown where she kind of is reevaluating like her whole life essentially and she's like in a very happy loving relationship but there's definitely things that are not ideal with her partner and she ends up reconnecting with like a high school love and I thought it was really good I did think by the end it was getting to drag a little and I definitely can see how someone would not love this they might think find the main character like annoying and kind of self-loathing but like that's the point she wasn't really a super likable character she was very flawed but I thought she was very realistic and I enjoyed reading her story definitely a character driven book but um yeah I thought it was a really good 
Really good and well written. Okay, next is The Return, which I'm sad to say it was not a favorite. I'm going to put this under meh. This is by Rachel Harrison, who has like really become an author that I just adore. However, this was not really the one for me. This was her debut, so I will say that it's nice to know like her books have gotten better over time. So this is about a group of friends from college who, yeah, they've been best friends forever. And then one of them goes missing and she's gone for two years and it's like they've had a funeral for her. They honestly, you know, have, I mean, I don't want to say like they're over it, they've mourned, but like they've moved on a little bit because they have to. And then one day she just turns up with no memory of the past two years and it's, it's kind of bizarre. And so these four friends go on this like retreat together and things are very weird. And the friend that was missing is like very different. Like she used to be vegan and she's like eating like raw meat, like an animal. <laughs> and she's like, smells weird and like there's some other stuff like she's just not right and I just I don't know not a lot happened for a lot of the book for like the first 70 percent and then a whole bunch of stuff that was just like bonkers happens at the end and I feel like it was just the pacing was weird and the plot wasn't like super engaging but I did I did think it was okay but like I said this is a her debut, so she did, I think, improve a lot because her most recent two books are the ones that I like the best. So I'm hoping that she's just just improving from there. Next is Leave the Lights On by Liv Anderson. This, mm, I think I'm gonna put this under meh as well. I really liked the concept of this book, but the execution was not it for me. So this is about a woman who is married to a very, very wealthy man and they live in Maine. Basically, she is married to this man and knows that he has like an entire second family, but she kind of, I don't want to say doesn't care, but she just like lets it slide because she's living this glorious rich person life that she enjoys. So there is one day an explosion at the local elementary school and a kid goes missing and like from some sorts of like reasoning and deduction she realizes that this kid that was abducted is her husband's son and she wants to help find him but she like doesn't really know how without confronting with her husband that she knows about the other family so that's kind of like one storyline. And then there's this whole kind of storyline about her in the past and her being like, I can't remember if she was like a tutor or like a CPS kind of person that like came to this house to like be with this kid and like the parents were really weird. And it was some like sort of culty thing, but basically like the culty vibes were like, it was like in fast forward. It was just kind of strange. It That part of the book reminded me of The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, which to me, the biggest thing that I couldn't stand about that book was that we're supposed to believe that these women were like brainwashed into this cult in like a matter of like a week. And I don't know. I feel like it works much slower than that. So this was okay. Uh, it went in some weird directions and... I think there was a lot of uh, suspension of disbelief required, but it was meh. That's why I put this lady here, because that's how I feel. Okay, next is The Haunting of Hill House, and I think this is going to be a very unpopular opinion, but I'm going to put this under stop. I did not like this, and I am confused about the fact that I didn't like this. I really thought I would. I really did, but I was so bored, and it felt like there was nothing scary about this. I don't know what I'm missing, but nothing, nothing scary happened. Like I, I truly want someone to explain to me what 
is scary about this or what is good about this that I missed? Because there's no doubt that this is a modern classic, but I just can't figure it out. It felt like a lot of people sitting around and like talking in like these weird, like pretentious conversations with each other. You couldn't really tell like who was joking and who was serious about stuff. And I just like found it. I, I skimmed a lot of this book because there's just like these huge paragraphs that have nothing to do with the plot. And the plot is like very minimal. I don't want to just like slander this book because I know it's a lot of people's favorite, but I, I'm missing something. I need someone to explain to me what about this book is so great that I'm not getting. Next is Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This I'm going to put under mm, meh. This was a sad one for me. I was really excited. It's a witchy book and it was my book club's pick and I really thought this was going to be exciting. You know how I love Rachel Harrison, but it wasn't my fave. This is about a woman whose boyfriend dumps her and she moves out of New York City to like a little town upstate and it's a very weird town <laughs> and she ends up becoming friends with this woman named Sophie who seems to have a chokehold on this town. Everyone's kind of afraid of her, but also obsessed with her, if that makes sense. And she is a witch, basically. That's kind of it. There is not a lot that goes on to, with this story. And I will say that the main character is like not super likable and either is Sophie. Yeah, this was just kind of weird. And it just didn't have like a ton of plot. And it just seemed like the main character and the witchy woman Sophie were like just kind of alienating everyone in the book, in the town. It just did nothing for me. I listened to the audiobook and the narrator did this weird voice for Sophie and I like was gonna throw my phone across the room because I was so irritated by the end of the book. So mm. Again, happy that Rachel Harrison's books have gone in an upward trajectory after The Return and Cackle. All right, next is The Leftover Woman by Jean Kwok. And I think I'm going to put this also in meh. Because while I liked it, it was not as good as I think it had the potential to be. So... I have conflicting feelings about this in a lot of ways. So this follows a woman named Jasmine who arrives in New York City from China after she's kind of escaped an abusive marriage and an, a marriage where because of the uh, Chinese one child policy, her daughter was taken away from her and basically trafficked into the United States. So she gets out of this relationship and is in America and she's trying to find her daughter. In the meantime, this other rich white woman in New York City has her daughter and is doing her best, I guess, but there's a lot of nuances. You know, she's doing her best to like have Chinese culture in the family and all of that, but it's she's a she's a very like stereotypical uppity white woman with like a career but like a nanny and all of this. Obviously these two women's lives intersect and it goes from there. So I I thought this book was pretty good for the most part but the ending got super chaotic and all over the place and just like took on a like oh shit I have to finish my book I need to write an ending. <laughs> That's kind of what it felt like. It felt kind of rushed. It felt kind of all over the place and I think it could have been done better. The timeline of the book was kind of confusing just because it wasn't super clear like when certain things were taking place. And like there is a reason for that a little bit, but there there isn't for a lot of the ways that I was confused. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I don't want to like spoil anything. I also, I, I don't know this because I have no experience with foreign adoption, but based on other reviewers um, that I, I kind of looked up after reading this, it feels like there's a lot of inaccuracies on foreign adoption. So I don't know. Do with that what you will. It wasn't a fave, but it was good. Not great. Okay, next is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. 
I am going to put this in Worth the Read. So this is a book that I've had on my TBR forever, like since it came out, like in the beginning of the year. And I will say like, I'm glad I read it, but I don't know if it was like the thing I built it up to be. I think it maybe got overhyped because I waited so long to read it. So this is just about a kid growing up in Virginia and life's tough. And it's just very much a the story of this guy's life. And there's a lot about drugs and drug overdoses. And like a lot of things are bad for this kid. And he grows up and like, I don't really know how else to explain this book. Because that's kind of just how it is. It's just this kid in Appalachia. This book is full of triggers if you have any regarding drugs or overdosing or addiction. So keep that in mind. I feel like I'm late to the party on this book, so I'm sure there's much better reviews than this for you to read if you're interested in this, but I did think it was good. It was very long and I think it was worth the read, but I don't think I would ever like read this again or anything. All right, next is Bye Baby by Carola Lovering. I'm putting this as Obsessed. So I just read this last week and it was so good. I read another book by this author last year, I think, and it was very similar in like vibes. Just that it, I think it might be pitched as like a thriller, but really it's more of just like a deep drama with some thrilling aspects. So this is about these two friends from high school who they've grown apart in adulthood and one of them is like an influencer and the other is like a travel, I don't want to say like a travel agent, but she's like very upscale travel agent, I guess. She gets to go all these places and like kind of travel concierge. Is that a thing? Okay. So the influencer lady has just had a baby and she's got her new group of friends and her super rich husband and they've just grown apart. So at the rich woman's birthday party, 30, 35th birthday, her baby is kidnapped. And the other friend, like I said, they've like grown apart and things are weird between them, uh, wasn't invited. And we find out on like the second page that she's the one that kidnapped the baby. And we're like, how did we get here? What? And so then we're kind of taken back in time. And there is a dual timeline between their current situation, or should I say, the first half of the book's like is like six weeks before the kidnapping. And then we also get flashbacks to their teenage years. So I think that's a pretty cool way of doing it. There's about like halfway point. Um, we kind of switch to like, you know, two hours after, three days after, that kind of thing. So it's definitely like the kidnapping is the pinnacle, is the like, peak of the book and everything else is kind of written right around that. So yeah, this was really well written. Um, there's like a few little nitpicky things that I kind of had issue with, but honestly, at the end of the day, I, I could not put this down. Like I could not read this fast enough. So that if that's not the sign of a good book, like, I don't know what is. This was, this was amazing. So this doesn't come out, I think until February or March, but this is definitely one I recommend putting on your TBR or your pre-order list or whatever because this was a book that like I flew through and I was like everybody leave me alone I need to read this. <laughs> okay next is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. So I'm gonna put this under worth the read. I really liked it. It is about a woman who to set the scene she is doing an interview with this journalist about something that happened when she was a child and that is her sister having a lot of like psychosis and having like a whole breakdown and there was an exorcism because the parents were like, I don't know what to do. They were at their wits end. They like did not know where to turn and the dad had started to get into religion and going to church and like very, very reluctantly the mother said, okay, I guess we can try this. 
and it ended up being filmed for a television show. And so it got to be very famous. And so now, like, I don't know, the 20th or 15th um, anniversary of the show, they're going back to, like, the house where this took place, and the younger sister of the person being exercised is being interviewed. So we kind of go back and forth between when this happened and then current. It definitely takes place more in the past. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. It was really pretty scary, and there was a lot of, like, making you doubt yourself and, like, what's what's happening, what's real, what's not. Um, is she really possessed or is this psychosis? And it really kind of a um, lot of questioning of, like, faith and religion. And I just really thought it was well-written, really held my attention, and really different than a lot of books that I've read. It also addresses, like, a lot of how demons are looked at in, like, pop culture and I found that to be really interesting. There is like a sort of like vignettes of this like blog where the author is like comparing this TV show, fake TV show, with popular movies featuring exorcisms. So yeah, and just demons in general. So that was just a really cool added little thing in there. I really liked this one. If you are into horror, this is a good one. Next, I read Big Bad by Chandler Baker. I'm going to put this under Worth the Read. This is actually, I think, a short story. It was maybe 100 pages or so. I thought it was cute. I mean, it was, like, definitely, like, horror, but it was, like, horror light, cozy horror. This is about, like, a regular PTA mom sort of situation who has two kids, and she's a werewolf. And her husband has known this since they started dating, and... I think it's like the dad is like late to pick them up at school or something. And so she can't get herself like locked away where she needs to be for her transformation before she transforms and then like hell breaks loose. I think that's what happens. I read this literally like the first day of October. So, and it was very short, so it didn't stay in my head that long, but I really liked it. I thought it was really fun and cute and unique and I really like Chandler Baker's writing so that was fun and I think it's available for free on Kindle it's like an Amazon original story so definitely recommend checking that one out okay next is uh keep your friends close by Leah Conan and I think I will put this also in worth the read so this is almost like a strangers on a train vibes this woman who is getting divorced from her husband is moving up to Woodstock, New York, out of the city, and she's kind of trying to figure out her life without her rich, powerful husband. She meets this other woman on the playground with her son, and the kids hit it off. They hang out all the time, and one day she just kind of drops off the face of the planet. She stops returning phone calls, and it's really rough because she's going. this woman's going through a divorce, and she's just feels like she's trying to make sure she gets custody and it's just like a really bad situation for her overall and she could really use a friend. So she's up in Woodstock kind of checking things out, seeing about getting a house and she sees this woman, her friend, walk by but like with a different child and a different man and she goes up to her and is like, hey, well, what the hell? Uh, where did you go? And she is like, I don't know who you are, like, you need to get away from me. And it goes kind of from there. And so then the husband of the main character dies, is murdered. And, of course, she is the main suspect because they have this huge, uh, ugly divorce and custody battle going on. And he had come up that morning from New York City up to Woodstock and... Just a lot of stuff. Um, so this comes out in February, and I thought this was really good. I, again, it held my attention really well. It was well written. It isn't like anything super, super twisty or groundbreaking. The end did get a little just kind of over overloaded with twists and turns that I don't think were necessary, but I did overall think this was a good time, and I will recommend it when it comes out. Next I read Let Him In by William Friend, and this is unfortunately going in I Hate It Here. So 
I was super excited to read this. I, If you watched one of my videos before, I know I was, like, obsessed with this cover, and I kind of still am. Like, that's a pretty cool cover. But, unfortunately, that was the best part of it. This is about a man who is a widower, and he has twin daughters, and he's had trouble connecting with them since their mother died. They live in the mother's childhood home. So there are a lot of memories there for the children's aunt and just in general. Like there's a lot of uh, family history in this home. So one day one of the twins gets up and is like, Daddy, there's a man in our room. That's terrifying. And so there isn't. There's no man. But these twins keep doing weird twin stuff and are like reading each other's minds with like, this whole, our friend wants to be seen, he wants to eat dinner with us, he wants to, like, color with us, and, like, it's just very weird. And the aunt of the kids is a child psychologist, so she kind of, like, comes and tries to, like, talk to them and, like, see what's up, and, you know, she's like, oh, it's normal, it's fine, but these kids will not quit about this. And it gets spooky scary goes from there but this book was honestly just so boring it it has such a great premise and such a like the vibes are all there the story was completely flat and really a disappointment and lastly the woman in me by britney spears obsessed so this do you really need my opinion i mean everybody has read this in like the first week it's come out. It was insightful. I will say um, a few things. Despite the fact that I put it under obsessed, the writing is not good. I don't know if that's because the ghostwriter needs a new job or because the ghostwriter was trying to write in Britney's voice, but it it was not good. It did get better as the book progressed, but like the first few chapters, I feel like I was reading a Wikipedia page <laughs> on Britney Spears. So that's kind of weird. I wish that it had been a little more in depth. I wish we'd gotten a, like a little more nitty gritty of everything that happened with her because there were a lot of situations where I was like, I don't understand. Like, she's like, Kevin wouldn't talk to me like he went across the country and I was I went to his hotel and he wouldn't talk to me and I'm just like wait what how would he just like not talk to you you're married like it just it there, there wasn't a whole lot of explanation on certain things that got me a little confused but I understand that like Brittany has had a lot going on and I don't expect her memory to be perfect I also don't expect to have her write about every little detail because this could be really long. There were also some weird like timeline things that I got a little confused about but that's just that could just be me. I loved her self-awareness in the whole I mean if you follow her or ever, ever looked at her Instagram she's all over the place and it's definitely like eye roll inducing a lot of the time and you're just like cringing but this book really was refreshing in that she, she just is who she is. And she's like, I know it's weird that I post these like naked pictures and I spin in circles all the time on my Instagram, but like, that's fun for me. And for a long time, I couldn't do that. I didn't have any control over anything. So I, I thought that was like really interesting to read about. And I enjoyed like hearing her story and just kind of stuff from her voice. Although, like I said, I do, I do think we could have gotten a lot more because it did seem kind of basic surface level but I did enjoy it and I would recommend it if you're you know a child of the early 2000s and were a big fan of hers your late 90s early 2000s for sure millennials if you're a millennial read this <laughs> if you liked Britney so there you have it those are the 16 books that I read in October overall it was an okay month I definitely had more meh books than I think I like to aim for and of course I had three that I really didn't care for at all but that's okay I'm looking forward to November and starting on my backlist binge readathon and getting into those books that I have I'm also planning to get into some of my holiday reads I've had a bunch that I've just had like hanging out waiting for this time to come and as far as I'm concerned Christmas starts on November 1st so I'm ready. Christmas is here. You can fight me on it if you want to. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you 
like my content in general, I would love it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next